Hey, what's going on, everybody? Joe Menza here. We're going to do another painting for you. And this one here, I'm going to do a little more scraping. Notice the rock scraping video is pretty popular. People seem to be very interested in that. Uh, so we're going to do a little scene with some scraping focus. And in this one here, I'm using 10 by 14, 140 pound arches. And I've already applied some little areas of moisture to the top. Try to leave the bottom a little dry so we can get some shimmering and glimmering going on. I'm coming back with a little yellow ochre mixed with some light red. And we're going to get sort of an orange casty color here for the sky. Try to get some more color in. Leaving a little areas of brightness, trying to leave a little white space. Coming back in with a little more intensity, a little, little deeper orange color here. And as I said, we're going to sort of just dry brush. We don't want a lot of water on the brush here. We're just lightly coming across with the full bent bristles of the goat hair brush. And trying to leave some white areas below and above the horizon line, which is right about where the clips are. Okay, so now I'm coming back in. I haven't cleaned the brush, but I've put some Payne's Gray. And there's a little alizarin crimson on there, just for a reddish tint. Almost a purpley color. And we're just sort of bending the bristle, tapping in some clouds. As you can see, I'm just tapping and pressing so the side of the brush rolls onto the paper as opposed to paddling strokes. And I'm tapping in just some small clouds at the bottom where we would expect to find smaller clouds as we get closer to the horizon. As you can see that purple cloud has a nice contrast to the orange background. So I'm using the same colors, the cloud colors from the brush. And I'm just creating some mountains, some hills, being very careful not to cut off too much of the light areas above and below. Gave it a little spray just to keep things wet. And now I'm coming in with some heavier, stronger colors, the same colors as the cloud. They're just darker now and just defining these background hills. Okay, so on to the medium Ron Ranson brush. And I'm just kind of uh, thinning out that center area there. I'm going to drop in a more foreground type mountain in the center. And I don't want it to be too dark. <clears throat> Okay, so again, more of the same colors, a little more intensity, a little 
burnt umber added. And as you see, it's setting back the other mountains a little further as I drop this in. And just a little red, just to warm that up a little bit. And I'm going to go. I have to go a little bit higher than I wanted to here, just because it just looks odd. Which is fine, because we're going to scrape it, so it'll give it a little more definition. Give it a little spray to keep it open. So here's our plastic card. This is a room key card. I saved those. Work really well. And while it's wet, just applying light, medium, I'd say medium pressure. If you press too hard, you're going to create scratches on your paper. If your paint is thick enough, it should just come right off. And the more tooth, the more grain you have in your paper, the better the effect is going to look. Smoother paper isn't really going to... Your, your mileage is going to vary depending on the smoothness of your paper. Let's just put it that way. Now, after I scrape those areas, I like to come back and just touch up the shadowy areas. You can do this more than one time um, if you want to scrape and re-scrape Thicker, wet, darker paint will yield better results for scraping. So I'm going to come in and re-scrape after I'm done knocking the camera down. I'm going to come in and re-scrape some of those areas. I get a nice rocky effect that I'm happy with. <clears throat> and again, coming back in with some more shadowy colors. Being very careful to preserve that little bit of light at the bottom, I'm brushing off what's left over the color below, which is dry, and taking what's left off of the brush. Have a piece of paper next to you if you're not sure of how much is on your brush and you want to do this, like I just did, it's too wet. Experiment on the scrap piece of paper so that you're sure you have the right amount of water and paint on your paper so that it, when you drag it across the grain, it leaves that shimmering effect. works best if you have two tones that work well together. You have sort of your base tone, your first wash, and then you go over the top with another complementary color. So now I'm coming back with more of those cloud co colors from above, just so there's a little reflective, either reflective quality or a shadow from the clouds above to complete sort of that two-tone effect that I was talking about. These colors almost have a southwest quality about them. 
almost a sort of deserty feel. It's interesting to experiment with different shades, different tones, things we don't see every day. Otherwise, you're, if you're using the same color scheme all the time, blue skies, you know, blue mountains, it just gets redundant. Just tapping in some interesting ground effects there. Could be anything really. Grasses, foliage, shrubbery. Just coming back in with some darker tones now that it's been drying back a little bit just to create more contrast there. The darker you go with those areas, the brighter the things around it will seem to be. Okay, so I'm going to do a little more scraping here and just going to create some textures in and around just to show you the different pressures, different scraping. And you can see at the bottom here now we're starting to put a little more character in here. You can overdo this, but you can always paint over it if it's, if it's too much. So I'm just going over some of the areas, creating some more little little ridges and things trying to hold my camera and do this and get in there nice and close where you can see some little scarring to the ground just those little tiny lines almost give you just some added detail you see that you just wouldn't ordinarily get through brushing that you can get after the fact. Yeah. As long as that area stays wet. So now I'm gonna do the same thing. Lighter hand on this one. And I'm going to come in, I'm going to put some foreground rocks in here. So I'm taking some nice dark colors. Burn Umber, Payne's Gray. I don't want to use Payne's Gray by itself because it dries, it has a reflective quality to it, and it just looks way too dark. You can get away with it a little more if you're going to be scraping. Now here I'm just taking that card, using a good amount of pressure, Putting in a lot of rocks, some of these won't be here after I go back and touch up here. Just a little bit of a rock pile. You can see the way I'm bending that card. And I'm going to put a few more on this side. Adding just a little bit of alizarin into that so it doesn't quite look exactly like the other side. Now I'm going to scrape in just some long pieces here. These could be just rocks sticking out of the ground old trees that are half sunk into the ground. Could be anything, really. I'm coming back in with a little more of that alizarin.
And I'm just gonna go ahead and dry brush in some of that alizarin. And look at that nice color there. I think that contrasts very nicely with the back. Okay, this one is complete. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're doing well with your paintings. Leave some questions in the comments if you have any. Please subscribe. Here's our close-up and in the frame. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.